time since we spoke on the scrimmage, what did you see from the defense? Uh, you know, I thought the guys were uh, a lot better prepared, um, you know, the last time that um, if you take away that the spring game where it was kind of pared down, but our last real full scrimmage we had in spring, um, the guys were obviously better prepared, a lot more um, experience and, and more repetitions in in the defense now, and that really showed. Uh, our alignments were really, um, I was very pleased with our alignments. Um, the tackling was, you know, something you always need to improve on. Um, but overall, with overall uh, consistency of getting lined up and the communication, I was real pleased. Did you line up a lot of one, twos, and threes, or do you mix and match a lot together? Uh, we've, no, I mean, some of, the, some of the reps get, you know, you get some ones with some twos and some twos with some threes. But um, for the most part, that's kind of how we practice a little bit anyway. There's a little bit of blending with, um, especially when you got guys kind of playing multiple positions like, like you guys know we're doing. So, um, but we got, we got a ton of reps in there and, and a lot of good film and, and uh, some, some really good preliminary assessments of, of where we're at uh, individually and, and as we get going forward. With Josiah and Keelan going on scholarship the other day, what's that like for you as a coach to see some of your guys get placed on scholarship? That's great. I mean, they're I mean, they're both uh, talk about as good people. I mean, just take all the football stuff away from them, but, but really nice, uh, nice young men, guys you enjoy to be around. So when you see people do things the right way, and you see people rewarded for that, I think that's really fulfilling. Uh, not just as a position coach, but just you know, kind of general in life. With JT moving, I guess the star. He said it really is not that much different, but how is he kind of? Stepped up as a leader, and then uh, that playmaking ability from that start position. Well, you know, JT's really right now handling handling his business well, <coughs> and uh, you know, everyone has uh, different things they're focused on working. If it's you know technique, or if it's scheme, or if it's you know overall consistency. Consistency, but um, you know, we've talked, and, and he's really taking um, taking a lot of pride in, into getting better. JT has said that uh, Star really works well with Viper. That in some ways they're in comparable positions. How are they different in your mind, and what they approach to the, the game? Well, they're a little bit different, and in, in really to me, it's the spacing of the offense. Um, you know, to the field traditionally, you're going to get more uh, field bubbles and, and more pass game. Where um, traditionally, if you watch the, the college game, and it's really has only to do with the hash marks. I mean, the hash marks really change the game significantly from the pro game. Um, the pro game, the pro game, the ball is essentially in the middle of the field every snap. Um, that's not the case with, with the width of the hash marks here. And, and you'll see more, uh, more physical run game into the boundary because of the reduced space. So, uh, you know, that's, that's basically what you'll see in terms of differences in, in, the, in the style of plays they have to defend. How have the cornerbacks been coming along? Uh, you know, the corners have been, T-Bucks been doing a great job with them. You know, we're, we're trying to develop as many as we can. You know, that's a, that's a position that is very technical. And, uh, you know, I know T-Buck's doing a great job, and we'll just keep getting those guys better. Maurice Smith said last week expected to go back to corners after the first scrimmage. Has he yet, or are you sticking in with it safety at this point? Uh, you know, we'll, we'll assess that probably. You know, we might make a decision on, on um, where we get him some reps tomorrow. You know, in the, in the spring, he took all his reps exclusively at corner. I know he missed a few days um, with some injury. but uh, So he has a good background there, and now I think – Today was practice 17, I believe, so now he's 17 practices in. So um, basically it's, it's close to 50-50 in his overall uh, work experience in the defense. So now, now we'll get to get that opportunity to see where, you know, where he's at and where he can help us best. What are you hoping to see from the defense when you go into this next scrimmage? Improvement, I mean, is really just the overall. Um, uh, like I said, I was pleased with the, with the comprehension and getting lined up in the communication. Uh, we always need to play more physical. I don't mean, <coughs> We give up zero yards and zero points, and I'll play. I want a more physical defense. So uh, those are things are that that are a mindset. You know, we got to continue trying to take the ball away, play physical, and then uh, you know it's, it's great getting in the scrimmage situations because you have first down, second down, third down, red zone. You get a lot more uh, situational football where you can take the time to educate them, get them on film, and and kind of go through some of those things. And, and at practice, you know, when it gets going so fast, you know, it's those are hard things to for them to be aware of. So. Um, just more situational football and more physical all the time. A guy like Torrey Dale has always been out there on the verge of having that breakout season. Do you see that finally coming together for him, especially the scheme you're using? You know, Torrey's gotten a lot better. You know, Torrey is a, a very um, – he's got good technique, you know, and I don't know what a breakout season is. You know, I'm not – I'm looking for those guys to play the best of their ability. Um, I, haven't, I haven't gone back and seen what they've really <coughs> done in the past to, to measure what a breakout season would be for anybody, but um, – I'm happy that he's playing on our defense. You know, he's, he's a valuable guy to our team, and, and I hope he keeps improving. Everyone knew Leo Lewis when he came here with the stars and whatnot, but what kind of a guy is Tim Washington? What, what makes him tick behind Leo there? 
You know, Tim is, you know, I, he, he played some, you know, some stand-up in high school. So he's really still in that developmental process of, of understanding what, a, what the game looks like with everybody around. You know, it's, it's uh, the defensive guys, I think it's, it's easier to play outside in and you eliminate half the field like the Vipers and the Stars do. Uh, the Mikes and Wills, you know, it takes, a, it takes I think, a significant um, body of work to feel comfortable seeing these two guys right here on side of me while I'm still looking at you. Um, so I think that's where he's at right now and just getting comfortable with, with playing inside and, and seeing more than he's used to. With Leo playing inside in high school, is that kind of why he has a little bit of an edge, maybe just because if he knows what you're talking about? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's uh, some of those things, uh, you know, they're, they're honed for years and years and right. years and years. And, uh, you know, some people call them instincts. Um, you know, I think those instincts are still developed. And the more reps that you get, uh, I think the more comfortable you become at, at, at seeing a lot of that picture. Now a couple of weeks out from the season opener, has everything really gone as expected, and what do you expect going forward leading into that first game? Well, um, I can't say that I had everything defined with <coughs> my expectation. You know, we were going to try to get as much of the defense in, um, identify our strengths and weaknesses, which we're still in uh, in the middle of. You know, we, we, we have uh, we put a lot of um, a lot of wrinkles in. And I think, like I said, the kids really uh, accepted it and did a good job in that first scrimmage. You know, we still got to find the guys that are going to win games for us. You know, and it's about production. I say it all the time. It's about production, not participation. I can put 11 guys out there. You know, but what 11 are we going to find that are going to produce to help us win football games? So we're still in that phase, and it's still very competitive. You know, Coach Mullen says it all the time. We're still in camp mode. Camp mode is compete mode. And uh, guys are still jockeying for positions. They're um, trying to – put themselves in a, in a situation where they're invaluable to the team and they need to be on the field. How do Nick Nelson and Nick kind of complement each other, your personality and the way they play? Um, you know, Nelson is a, a very, you know, he's a, obviously a veteran guy, been here a long time. He's picked up the defense. He comes in, we talk uh, we talk some of our line movements together because he, he can line up the front. He knows the linebackers are supposed to say, so he's a guy in there that, that does a great job of, of communicating with you know, with basically those five people in the box with the two fours and the, and the, uh, the two inside backers. You know, Nick's a guy that, that uh, when he plays physical and he's ready to go, you know, he can, he can be very disruptive. So, uh, you know, they they're both have, you know, different strengths and weaknesses. Um, but, again, both those guys are, are going to play a lot of snaps for us, and, and uh, hopefully they're both very, very productive. You kind of said when he's ready to go. That's always been the, the, the key with him is getting him. <laughs> How have you and Brian tried to pull that out of him? You know, I think Brian has done a great job of being consistent. <clears throat> You know, I think uh, anytime you want to improve somebody with where they're at, I think there needs to be a consistent approach. I think there needs to be a long-term approach and a non-emotional approach. And that's, uh, I think that's the way Brian and myself have, have uh, taken to try to get him to, um, to where he's you know, more consistent and, and somebody that can give us significant play time.